Hey team, welcome back to McGrath Thematics. Here is your theme music. All right, so today for our last video on further integration, we're going to be looking at a challenge question about integrating using a substitution. All right, enough time wasting, let's get into it. So here is the question. This is from the NESA published sample examination that was released for uh, all the maths courses about a month ago. Okay, this is when in the extension one paper. It's a three mark question using the substitution x equals sine squared theta or otherwise evaluate the following integral. So it is pretty common to see questions that are involving substituting sine or cos. Uh, a bit rarer to see a substitution for sine squared or cos squared. We did one the other day that was cos squared. This one is uh, obviously sine squared. And I wanted to go through this one because uh, some of the setup is pretty similar, but there is an important difference between the two. Okay, as pointed out to me by uh, one of my extension two students, this particular integral does have quite a lot of applications for mechanics. So it's uh, worthwhile getting your head around. All right, let's get started. Okay, sorry, I should specify when I say useful for mechanics, I mean useful in the extension to topic mechanics, not necessarily useful for people who are mechanics um, that I'm aware of. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, as the question says, we can use the substitution x equals sine squared, or there's another option otherwise. I'm going to pretend that doesn't exist because I personally can't see a way of doing it without the substitution x equals sine squared. If you can, by all means, uh, let me know in the comments. I look forward to that. So first thing we're going to do, uh, as per usual, when I have a definite integral with limits and I'm using a substitution, the first thing I like to do, so I don't forget, is change those limits. Okay, so I'll be taking my substitution and I'll be letting x equal 0 and a half. Okay, so it's important that you don't sub 0 and a half in here because that would be wrong. Uh, these two values are x values. Okay. So now we essentially need to solve these two equations for theta. Okay, we can uh, take the square roots of both of them. Luckily, the square root of zero is still zero, and the square root of a half is one over root two. And now we're just trying to solve these equations. Obviously, uh, you know and I know, and everyone knows that these have infinite solutions. We're just looking for the first one, typically. So the first solution for sine equaling zero is an angle of zero, and the first solution for sine equaling one on root two you should know is 45 degrees or pi on four radians. Okay, so those are our two values for theta that we're now gonna use as our limits, okay? So instead of zero and a half, we're gonna have zero and a quarter pi. So I'll just change those. Okay, now the next thing I like to do is change the dx. So I need to take my substitution and I need to derive it. So I'll be doing that next. All right, so if x is sine squared, just like in the last video, this does mean sine theta all squared, keep in mind. Just makes the uh, calculus a bit more simple because now it's a bit clearer that you need to use the chain rule here to differentiate. So to find dx on d theta, uh, the two comes down and we get two sine theta times uh, cos theta. Okay, we are multiplying by the derivative of uh, what's inside the bracket. Okay. Now here it gets a bit interesting. With the last video, when we got to this point, we said, oh, that's awesome. I know what two sine theta cos theta is. That's sine of two theta, okay? And I know that your instincts go towards that because it seems like the question's designed for us to use that. But the tricky part about this question is it's better to leave it in this form of two sine theta cos theta, okay? You'll see why later, but for now, try and resist the urge to write this as sine of two theta. For now, please just leave it as 2 sine theta cos theta. All right, so now we just uh, have to uh, yeet this d theta across. I just dabbed three times. You guys probably didn't see it. But we get dx equals 2 sine theta cos theta d theta. And now we'll substitute this into our integral for dx. Beautiful. Now we can actually substitute in the fact that x equals sine squared theta and see what is left to tidy up. So we can do. So our integral has become, instead of x over 1 minus x in the square root, those x's are now sine squareds. Okay? Now, I'm hoping that when you see 1 minus sine squared, your Pythagorean identity alarm goes off because 1 minus sine squared is, of course, cos squared. Okay, so we can change this from 1 minus sine squared to cos squared. And now we have the square root of these two 
well, the square root of sine squared on cos squared is going to be sine on cos. Okay, we're just taking the square root of the top and the bottom of the fraction. And now this is why I said we need to avoid writing this as sine 2 theta. And you also need to resist the urge of writing sine theta cosine theta as tan theta, because now in this form, uh, stuff cancels off and it tidies up. Okay, we have cos theta and we have divided by cos theta. So these two vanish. Okay, we can put the two at the front of the integral and sine multiplied with sine is of course sine squared. Okay, so after all this work, we now have to get to this point and to answer this question, like I said, it's pretty tough. Now we need to know how to integrate sine squared. Okay, hopefully you're familiar with this. We did a video earlier in the week. There's a substitution for sine squared that allows us to integrate. And it's the fact that sine squared is equal to half of one minus cos two theta. Okay, again, if you want proof of how we derive this, it's in your notes from the other week. This is actually kind of convenient because we have a half here and we have a two at the front. So these two are gonna make just one. So really we are just integrating uh, one minus cos two theta between zero and pi on four. Okay, so now after all the algebra and playing around, now we can actually do some calculus. We can integrate. So the one is going to integrate to a theta. Uh, cosine integrates to sine. And of course, we need to divide by a half because that is the derivative of the angle function, I guess you could call it. Okay, that's our integral. We're just going to substitute in pi on four and zero. Uh, the only convenient part about this question is that the zero, well, you get zero minus a half of sine of zero, which is just zero. Okay, so really we only need to sub in the pi on four. Okay, so we have pi on four, take away a half of sine of double the angle, double pi on four, you get pi on two, which again is pretty convenient because uh, you are hopefully already aware that sine of pi on two, which is sine of 90 degrees, is just one. So this turns into just pi on four minus a half. And uh, there is your correct answer. If you managed to get from the initial question to this point, you are doing really well. That is probably one of the tougher questions I've seen in extension one. Uh, the, the trig one's usually pretty tough and this one was a whole nother level. Okay, so if you managed to get that, very well done. You are a king or a queen, pardon me. All right, that's it for today. So. Your homework for the rest of today or the rest of this week is to make sure that you are finished with the further integration chapter because uh, as of Monday, we are onwards and upwards into statistics. Okay, also, if you have some spare time this weekend, maybe check in on your elderly neighbors, make sure they're okay, see if you can go to the shops for them. You never know, they might be doing it tough. Uh, most importantly, in this very uh, troublesome climate we're in, try and have a relaxing weekend, take some time for your hobbies, go for a walk, uh, catch up with less than 10 mates in a open spacious arena. All right, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys later.